Welcome back to Genetics on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to go over a somewhat confusing topic for students first beginning the study of genetics, and that's the differences between a silent mutation, a missense mutation, and a nonsense mutation. So these are three different kinds of mutations that you can have in a gene, but they have different effects. Right? And actually silent mutations really don't have any noticeable effects. And we'll talk about what each of these is and why. So the first thing I want to do is focus on this DNA segment right here. This is just a small segment of a larger gene. And so I have triplet nucleotides. Here we have A, G, C. I have C, C, T and G, G, A. And then it would go on and on and on. It's much longer than this. I'm just only showing you three. So if I take this sequence of DNA and I convert it into its mRNA, or just RNA, um, it's not going to change. I'm going to have AGC, CCU, and GGA. Notice the only difference here is that all the T's are replaced with U's. Okay, So only one nucleotide actually changed in the RNA. And then if I want to figure out uh, what amino acids these code for, um, I'm going to have AGC, I can use a genetic code table. And one way I can actually uh, find one of these is just go into Google and type in genetic code and then search images. And you'll find tons of images like this. Um, so this is actually for the RNAs because it has U's. So let's figure out what AGC is. All right, so here's my A first letter, G second letter, and then C third letter. AGC encodes the amino acid serine. Now I have my second code on CCU. Which amino acid does this encode? So I have C, C, U. This is a proline, right? And my third codon, G, G, A. Let's see, G, G, A. That's going to be the amino acid glycine. And really, I should denote that this goes on and on. Okay, so it's only three of the amino acids, but there's a lot more. Okay, so this is what I'm going to consider the, my um, reference sequence. This is my reference DNA, my reference RNA. Okay, now what's going to happen if I take any one of these nucleotides and mutate them? Well, I have three options for types of mutations. I have a silent mutation, a missense, and a nonsense. So the first thing I'm going to do, let me actually blow this up right here. I have A, G, C, 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 T, G, G, A. Again, the same sequence right here. It goes on and on to the right towards the three prime. It's a much longer gene. I'm just showing you three codons. Let's do what's called a silent mutation first. So, all right, so now here what I'm going to do is I'm going to mutate the cytosine into a thymine. All right, so now my DNA sequence is going to be a little bit different. I've got AGT, CCT, GGA, and it would go on and on and on. All right, let's transcribe this into RNA. Again, the mRNA that's encoded by this gene is going to be the same except for thymines become uracils. So AGT becomes AGU. CCT becomes CCU, and then GGA, and it goes on, okay? Now, the CCU and GGA, my second and third codons here, those are the same as what was up here. So those are still going to be proline and glycine, okay? The second and third amino acids are going to be proline and glycine. Now, I did mutate the cytosine to a thymine, so surely the amino acid in the, encoded by the first codon will be different, right? Not necessarily. Notice that even though I mutate the C to a T, and then as RNA it becomes U, we need to see what this AGU encodes. So we go to the genetic code table, AGU. Notice it's still the amino acid serine, S-E-R. It's still serine. So notice, despite mutating the C to a T, it did not change the amino acid that was encoded. In other words, this mutation of a C to a T did not change the amino acid sequence in the protein. And if you have any mutation that does not change the sequence of amino acids, it's termed a silent mutation. It's silent because you would not notice any effects. This C and this T, it's irrelevant which nucleotide it is. Irrelevant, because that codon still encodes a serine. Same amino acid. So silent mutations, you're going to have no change in amino acid. And one thing that's worth noting here about the genetic code is notice that most of these amino acids are actually encoded for by multiple codons. For example, serine is going to be encoded for by actually six, four up here, two down here, histidine 2. In fact, there's only two amino acids encoded by one codon. Tryptophan up here, UGG, and then methionine, AUG. 
Okay. Other than that, they're all encoded for by multiple codons, at least two up to six. All right, that's a silent mutation. Now let's look at an example of a missense mutation. So I'm actually in this case going to mutate the same cytosine. I'm going to mutate it to an adenine this time. Okay, so now my gene is going to be AGA, CCT, GGA, and it goes on. All right, let's transcribe that into its mRNA. So again, everything's going to be the same except T's become U's. So it's going to be AGA, CCU, GGA. Now, just like it was in the silent mutation, codons 2 and 3a didn't change, so those are still going to be proline and glycine. Same. But now I've mutated this cytosine into an adenine. What happens with AGA? What does this encode? Well, let's find it on the genetic code table. AGA. Now we've changed the amino acid. It's no longer a serine, it's an arginine. All right, so this is an arginine. So now we've actually changed the amino acid, okay? So it's no longer serine, it's arginine. And any time you have a mutation, any kind of mutation that changes the amino acid, it's called a missense mutation because now instead of the sequence serine, proline, glycine, I have arginine, proline, glycine, and so on and so forth. So I change the identity of the amino acid to a different amino acid. Therefore, this is called a missense mutation. All right, hopefully that makes sense to you. Now, the final mutation type we're going to cover in this video is what's called a nonsense mutation. So a nonsense mutation, what is that? This is probably the most difficult one to understand. In the genetic code table, pretty much everything in here is an amino acid, but there's one exception, actually really three if you count it. We have what are called stop codons. So a stop codon tells the ribosome when to stop translating, meaning if, if there was a natural stop codon in the mRNA, then the amino acid that was put in before that would be the terminal amino acid, the final amino acid. This just tells you when to stop. The stop codon is kind of like when you're taking an exam and the teacher tells you when to put down your pencil. Okay, that's the stop codon. You have to stop right then. Well, what would happen if the teacher got the time wrong and instead of letting you go 50 minutes, only let you take the test for 20 minutes? Well, that would be a premature termination of the exam. You actually should have 30 more minutes, but they stopped it early. So what a nonsense mutation does is it stops translation early. It truncates the protein, and so the sequence of amino acids you have is much shorter than it ought to be. All right, so now let's look at a specific nonsense mutation. And for this, I'm actually going to choose to mutate this red guanine that's underlined into a thymine, as shown right here. All right, so now my gene sequence is going to be A, G, C, 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 T. TGA, and then there's going to be other triplet nucleotides after this. Keep that in mind. It's very important for this example. I'm going to transcribe this now into mRNA. This is going to be AGC, CCU, since all thymines become U's, UGA, and then so on and so forth. Okay. Now, what do each of these codons encode? AGC, remember this was serine. So the first codon encodes the amino acid serine. CCU, that's going to encode the amino acid proline. So the second codon encodes a proline. Now, in the wild type or the normal healthy version of this gene, the third codon, GGA, encoded a glycine. What happens now that we have a UGA? So now we have UGA. This is a stop codon. So now there could have been potentially... 100, 300, even 500 other amino acids that came after this glycine. But because the glycine codon was uh, mutated to a stop codon, now the protein is going to be way too short. So let's imagine a situation that in reality, this amino acid sequence should have been, let's say, 100 amino acids long. 100 exactly. Here's three of them, so there would have been 97 after this glycine, 97 amino acids after this glycine. But due to this glycine being mutated into a stop codon, now instead of being a 100 amino acid protein, it's only two amino acids. Okay, So a nonsense mutation always truncates the amino acid sequence and gives you a sequence of amino acids that is too short. And how short it is depends on where the nonsense mutation occurs. It can occur anywhere in the sequence, 
But the point is, is if it's a true nonsense mutation, it's going to give you a, a protein that's a lot shorter. If you want a good example of a gene that has lots of nonsense mutations in it, look up some information on the human urate oxidase gene. I'll include a link to one of my videos about this in the description if you find it interesting. But in any case, the urate oxygen only in humans and other uh, specific higher order primates has nonsense mutations in it so that humans do not have a functional uh, urate oxidase protein. That's one example where we have nonsense mutations actually across the board in humans. All right, so hopefully this video made sense and now you can distinguish between silent, missense, and nonsense mutations. Please make sure to like my video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.